Welcome to another session of your basic statistical literacy. Like I said, please make sure that you complete the register. I've just pasted the link on the chat. Today we're going to be looking at chi-square test for independence. We're only going to concentrate on chi-square test for independence for this session. Then following two sessions, we will have the linear regression and then we'll end up, we'll do some activities in terms of how to answer questions um, and use a little bit of revision to just to consolidate everything that we have been doing since from first semester until now. And then after this session, then we will have to schedule individual module specific sessions for exam preparations. Okay. Are there any questions or comments before we start with the session? Morning, Cecilia. How are you? Good. Yes, this. Uh, not for now. I don't have questions. Okay. Then we can continue if there are no questions. So we're going to look at chi-square test. And for you to be able to do this, you need to have your statistical tables because we do, we do need to use the critical values. So you will need your statistical tables. You need to know your formulas. We will be do, using two, at least two formulas in this session. So you need to be able to know how to use those formulas to calculate the values of the statistics and to calculate the values of your um, the values of your expected frequencies. Is the values for expected frequencies and the test statistics? Okay, so let's get to it then. By the end of the session, you should be able to know how and when to use chi-square test for contingency table or what we call for independence. Like with hypothesis testing, uh, with chi-square test, there are four steps that you always need to know and remember to do in order for you to be able to answer questions. Step number one, it's is stating your hypothesis testing statement. So it means you will have to state your null hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis because for you to be able to know what you need to be doing, you need to state that hypothesis for the population. And always remember that this is what the researcher wants to prove and the alternative will be the opposite of that. Um, and always remember that we always use the population parameter, but for independence, there are only two cases. So there are two things that you always need to state dependent and independent. And in your null hypothesis, you should always have independent. Your alternative will state dependent because we're doing for dependent. <clears throat> then step number two, you need to be able to define your decision method. And here yeah, we're talking about the critical value, you need to be able to go and find your region of rejection using the critical value for chi-squared. And the critical value for chi-squared, it's always going to be a one-sided test uh, based on the distribution of a chi-squared because it's a, um, uh, a positively skewed 
uh, test. Then step number three, you need to be able to calculate your test statistic. And calculating the test statistic, it means you should have calculated your expected frequencies. And I will show you how to do that. So but it's the test statistic, which is your chi-square test statistic. Then step number four is for you to make a decision and then conclude. And the decision, you are going to use your critical value and the value of your test statistics to make that decision and then conclude. Basing your conclusion to your hypothesis testing. So, how do we state the null hypothesis and the alternative? Because a chi-square test is a uh, chi-square test for independence, we use what we call a contingency table. Therefore, it means you will be given two categorical variables that you need to test whether are they related. It's, it's a test of relationship for two numerical values. You will realize that the next time we do another test for relationship, we will be using the regression, but that will be for numerical values. For chi-square test, it is for two numerical values, sorry, for two categorical values. And then for those two categorical values, we represent them on a contingency table, which is a um, N by M uh, table, cross tabulation which will have the number of rows and the number of columns. How we state the null hypothesis, we always use independent. We will state that the two categorical variables are independent and your alternative will state that the two categorical variables are dependent. It is very, very important. And what does that mean? Independent means the two categorical variables have no relationship between them. The dependent, it means they have a relationship between them. But when you state your null hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis, we say it's independent. <laughs> Always remember that. To calculate the test statistic, we use this uh, formula, but I want to show you the cross tabulation. So this is a um, a table, a contingency table of class standing uh, by the number of meals per week. If this was a questionnaire sent to all students at this university or this college, and they were asked to choose how many number of um, number of meals per week do they have at the canteen in order for us to make decisions about um, uh, whether to continue to offer more uh, meals in the canteen. So we need to understand how the two classes or the two um, categorical variables relate to one another as well. Um, so this is your observed values, because this will be the values inside the table. That will be the values that you would have observed from the questionnaire, and you calculate the total. Sometimes you don't get these totals. You just need to make sure that on your contingency table, you calculate the totals and then calculate the grand total, which is very important. And based on the brown area, which is the inside area. This we call them the observed frequencies. In order for us to calculate the test statistic, we need to calculate the expected frequencies, which means we need to use your, for, for example, we need to use uh, your total for the observed frequencies. So we will, you will see in the next slide, I will show you how to calculate this expected frequency. So with an expected frequency of this 24, we need to calculate it using the total for the row and the total for the column and the grand total. And I'm going to show you how we do that. 
and you will take your test statistics will be the sum of your observed minus your expected squared divided by your expected. And because a contingency table is made up of rows and columns, you are able to find the degrees of freedom of those. When we go and find the critical value, we will use the number of rows. These are rows, this is a row, a row, a row, and these are columns. Columns are at the top. So here we have one, two, three columns. One, two, three, four rows. You don't count the totals. So in order for us to find the degrees of freedom, we use the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. How we calculate the expected frequencies, like I explained, the expected frequency, we calculate them by using the row total times the column total divided by the grand total, which is your N. So going back here, in order for us to calculate the expected frequency for 24, we will take the row total of that, which is 70, multiplied by the column total, which is 70, divided by N, which is the grand total, which is 200. That will give us the expected value. For all of them, you do the same. Let's say we want to calculate for six. You will take the row total, which is 30, multiply by the column total, which is 42, divide by 200, which is your N you will have to remember to do that for you to calculate the expected frequency of all of them. When we do the example, you will be you will see how easy it is to do this. To make a decision, we always use the critical value and the test statistic. So the decision rule states that if your test statistic that you would have calculated using this equation and your critical value now your critical value we didn't do that in detail but remember your critical value for chi squared your critical value for chi squared is given by your alpha and the degrees of freedom this x squared is chi squared it's, it's just the chi squared you don't have to do anything there. If, for example, I said my degrees of freedom is zero, no, sorry, my alpha value is 0, 0,05, and my degrees of freedom based on this table that we have, you will look at this, it's got how many number of columns? We said degrees of freedom is number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one. Someone's microphone is not muted. Anissa, your mic is not muted. Can you please make sure that you are muted? Okay. So we know there were four rows, three columns. So let's go to our critical value, we'll find it by using the formula. We said four rows minus one times three columns minus one, which gives us three times two, which is six. So our degrees of freedom will be six. And we'll go and find this on the critical values of T uh, table. Oh, sorry, critical values of chi table. and. I'm going to show you, um, I will share my entire screen just now. Um, it's called critical values of chi, and I will get to that when we do an example, but that is how you will find your critical value by using your alpha value and the degrees of freedom. And if your test statistic is greater than your critical value, you're going to reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, you do not reject the null hypothesis. And that is how we do the best.
Book High Independent. I just want to share my entire screen. Just discard this and stop sharing and share my entire screen. I wanted to. So that then we can be able to see everything that I do, I can toggle between. Okay, so now let's look at an example. So the mean plan selected by 200 students is shown below. And this is almost exactly the same table that we used previously when I was doing the explanation. The class standing of the student is as follows and the number of meals per week are as follows. So 24 means freshmen say they prefer 20 meals per week. Uh, Sophia, they prefer, soph uh, sophomore, they prefer uh, 22, uh, 22 of them, they prefer 20 meals per week and 26 of them prefer 10 meals per week and 12 of them prefer uh, no meals per week. And the total of the sophomores who answered this questionnaire, there were 60. For senior students, they prefer 14 meals, uh, 14 of them prefer 20 meals per week, 16 of them prefer 10 meals per week, 10 of them prefers no meals per week, and there were 40 of them who answered this question. And if we look at the number of meals, those who prefer 10 meals per week, there were 88. 32 of them were freshmen, 26 sophomore, 14 they were junior, 16 they were senior. And that's how you read this table, just like that. And these are our observed values with the totals already calculated, right? So uh, if so we need to test please, the hypothesis, yes. Just, yeah. Can you go back to the table, please? You say 40, we, 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 you said we start from? No, they will give you a table like this. This is your observed table. Uh, okay. If they ask you what are the frequency for those who prefer, let's say they ask you, what is the uh, the frequency of junior who prefer 10 meals per week? You will say they are how many? Event. Junior? who prefer 10 meals per week there are how many how many of them 14. there are 14 of them yes so you will just need to know how to read this table like that so it, regardless of whether you start with the meals per week or you start with the class standing so these are your frequencies your observed frequencies to state the okay, number right. purposes Yes, to state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis, we say the meal plan and class standing based on the two categorical variables, which were meal plan and class standing, we say they are independent. The alternative will state that meal plan and class standing are dependent. Always remember null hypothesis, independent. Alternative, dependent. To calculate the expected value, because we need the expected value, to calculate the expected value for 24, we will say <clears throat> 70 multiplied by 70. We did that before. 70 multiplied by 70 divide by 200, which is that value and that will give us I'm just gonna get my calculator quickly. So we have 70 multiply by 70 divide by 200 and that gives us 24.5. You can see there, I write it on my expected table. It is 
it is 24.5. Now let's do the next one. I will do 22. So with 22, 22, it will be 60 multiplied by 70 divided by 200. It will be 60. That's my row total times my 70, which is my column total, divided by 200 which is my grand total, and that gives me 21. As you can see there, it's recorded as 21. For junior 10, for those 10, if we calculate the expected value for 10, it will be 30, which is my row total, times my column total of 70 divided by my 200, which is what we calculated here, which is 10.5. And you can do for all of them, and you, you will calculate all your expected values. And if you add your expected values and your for all your columns and rows, they should be the same as the total for your observed values. And once we have calculated our expected values, then we can go and calculate our test statistics. Now, remember, the equation says it's the sum of your observed minus the expected squared to divide by the expected. So what we're going to do is our observed, which is 24, minus our expected, which is 24.5. We need to square this answer and divide by the expected, which is 24, the corresponding expected. Plus, because of the summation, that summation means adding up. So then it means plus. The next one, we can take 32. So it will be 32 minus the expected, which is 30.8 squared divided by 30.8. And plus, and you continue until you add all of them on your table. And up until you get to the last one, which is this 10 at the end, when you get to that, it will be 10 minus 8.4 squared divided by 8.4, which will give you, if you add, once you solve this and you add them, you will get 0 0.70. Now, <clears throat> that is our test statistics. To go find the critical value, Remember our critical value we use if they told us that we must use alpha of 0, 0.05. Then our critical value will be alpha, uh, the chi squared of alpha and the degrees of freedom. And our degrees of freedom, we said there are four rows and three columns. It will be four minus one times three minus one, which will be three times two, which gives us six and 0, 0.05. Let's go to the table to go find this critical value. And we go to the table. And you will use the critical, let's make it bigger so that everybody can see. We use the table, table E4, which is critical values of chi. And on the critical values of chi, you will always see that it is a left, or oh, sorry, a right or positive skewed distribution, right? Your critical value will always be on your right hand side to make a decision. So anything that falls on the right hand side, it will be rejected if it falls um, on the right of the critical value on the region of rejection. So also, we don't use the top ones. We only use the upper tail values, which are your alpha values next to the table. We're looking for 0, 0,05. If there is 0, 0,05, we're looking for the degrees of freedom of 6. Where they both meet, that's where we will be. So, and that is our critical value. 
critical value is 12,592. So since we know that our critical value is 12,952 and it's there, that is 12,592, we're going to take our test statistic, which is 0, 0,7. Where does it fall? It will fall in the do not reject area. So we're going to look at it and take our test statistic, look at it and say it falls in the do not reject area. And therefore, because we know that the rule said, if the test statistics is bigger than the critical value reject denial hypothesis, mm -hmm. now we can conclude by saying the test statistic of 0, 0.79 is less than the critical value of 12,592. So we do not reject the null hypothesis. And we can conclude by saying that there is not sufficient evidence that the meal plan and class standing are related. And that's how we do the hypothesis testing. Let's look at an example. And here I'm going to introduce a template for ease of use as well. So now with contingency table, there can be many different ways of doing a contingency table. They can be in terms of this one or the previous one that we used, this contingency table. We call this contingency table because it's got four rows and three columns. We call it a three. Uh, a four by three call a four a four by three contingency table. Uh, if we come to our uh, exercise one, there are one, two, three columns. So there are three, sorry, rows and one, two, one, two columns. So we call this a three by two contingency table. We can also have a three by three contingency table or a two by three contingency table. So we will have two rows, three columns, or we can have three rows, three columns. So now I want to introduce based on what you just learned. I know that it might be a little bit tricky, but you will have to practice. Uh, we're going to introduce the template. I do have a template here. On this template, I've created a three by two contingency table, a two by three contingency table, a two by two, and a three by two. There can even be more than that, uh, depending on what you need to calculate. I do have also here at the bottom a two by four contingency table. So you can always look at this and look at which one better suits the contingency table that you are working with. So let's go back to our thing. On our one, it's a three by two. So I need to go to my contingency table here and look for a three by two. And there it is, it's on S. So I can Cross, 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 cross up until I get to that. So this is just the table I want to use. Then I can also go to the table. Yeah. I can black, white, Indian represent those values here. So let's just minimize the contingency table that I have here. Sorry, my Excel sheet. Sorry, it's taking me long. Just go to the side. I'm going to represent the same table here. The way I see it, it's white. So you can overwrite the values white, black, and Indian. What I will suggest you do is when you go to the notes section uh, where I've uploaded this, please download it outside and save it on your laptop or somewhere where you are able to use it. Don't 
use it on online because then you're going to overwrite it for everyone. Um, and then the top is male and female. So I don't need all these other values that I have inside the table. I'm going to just delete only the ones inside the table that corresponds the white shaded area. The, the gray one, you don't touch. You don't do anything to it. Uh, only the white sucked. So I must just put the very same values that we have here. So I'm going to say this is 40. This is 32. And this is 48. Now you will realize something because we already have a value here on the table that they gave us, which is 70. You need to use your your calculator and your math knowledge to say if I have a 70 there, it means 40 plus this number should give me a 70 because this is a total of this row, right? So if you know your math, you will say 70 minus 40 will give you 30. And that will be 70. You will see that that 70 will correspond with that one. And on this one, because they have completed it, I can put the 48. And you will see that the table already calculates the totals for all the values that you have. And for this one, they they gave us 120 there, right? Um, and they didn't give, they gave us 250. All what we know is that if this is a uh, hundred and 20, right? Then if I know that, let's go back here. If I know that this is 120, I can calculate what this value will be, right? This value will be 250 minus 120. So 250 minus 120 will give me 130. Now, I also have the answer for that one. It was 80. So I know that this is 80. I can find the answer for this one. So what is the answer for that value? That will be 250 minus 80 minus 70, which is 100. Sorry, this is Yes. Hey, forgive me. I'm a little bit lost. Yeah, the total you say 120. I'm a little bit lost there. Because 40 plus 32 plus 48 is 120. Okay. If you add all of them, they will give you 120. Oh, thank you, Sis Liz. So we already also calculated that this one there is 30. So since we have 30 and 48, we can calculate the missing value there. 130 minus 48 minus 30 will give us 52. It will give us 52. So I just need to remove all these values now. Because so I do have them populated. So that will be 80, that is 30. 52, 130, and 120. So I have my contingency table. I can also come here and replace all the values, and that will look exactly the same as that. So that is my observed frequency table, right? Step number two in terms of chi squared, it says number one, we need to state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis, right? So a null hypothesis will state that race and gender are in the independent. The alternative will state that race and gender are 
are dependent. That's step number one. Step number two, in terms of this, we need to calculate the expected value so that we can calculate the test statistic. But before we calculate the test statistic, let's use, let's assume that this test, we were given alpha of 0, 0.05. So step number two, we know that we need to find the critical value of Uh, chi square alpha and the degrees of freedom, which will be the number of uh, degrees of freedom is number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. So if we have alpha of 0, 0,05 and our number of rows, let's calculate it here, rows minus one times columns minus one, how many number of rows do we have? We have one, two, three. Don't count the total. So it's three minus one. How many number of columns do we have? One, two. So that will be two minus one. And that will give us three minus one is two. Two minus one is times one, which is equals to two. So our critical value, we go to the table, look for alpha of 0, 0,01 and the degrees of freedom of 2, our critical value is 5,991. So we do have 5,991. That is our region of rejection. So step number three, we need to find the uh, expected values. So to calculate the expected value, remember we use row total times column total divide by your n, which is the 250. So let's calculate the row total for 40. It will be 70 minus oh, 70 times 120. So that will be 70 times 120 equals divide by 250 and that gives us 33.6. So we can write it here, 33.6 and we do for 32. For 32, it will be 80 times 120 equals divide by 250 equals and that is 38.4. 88.4. It will take you long. So if we go to our table here, what I've done is I've calculated those expected frequencies. You can do the same. Copy the labels from this table and paste them there. I could have just used the um, automated thing. And here is my expected value. It says my row total, if I click on it, you will see there, my row total 70 times my column total T8 is 120 divided by the purple, which is 250. If you go to the next one, oh, sorry, you can just go to the next one like that. Click on the next one and double click on it. It gives you how it calculated that one. So those are your expected values, right? So which are your expected values? Um, and once you have confirmed all your expected values, you just click on escape. And this is the table with your expected values. Now with your expected values, what this calculation does, it goes and it calculates your test statistic. By doing this calculation here. So what does this calculation do? It is calculating your test statistics, which is the sum of your observed value minus your expected value squared 
divide by your expected value. So what it does is it takes 40 minus 33.6 squared divide by 33.6 and then it goes and it gets this answer. That is this answer that we have here. So it takes 40 times, oh, sorry, 40 minus 33.6, and it multiplies it again with itself because power is the same as squared. So I could also just use here, yeah, instead of that, I could use the power. Uh, where is power now? Power of two, it will still give me the same answer. So this is one, one, two. I can also do the same here. Instead of using multiplying it by itself, I can just say to the power of two, and it will still give me the same. So I do for 40, for 32, for 48. You can see there for 48, it's 48 minus 48 because the expected value is 48. Also for 52, the expected value is the same, the hence there are zero, zero there. And then it adds all of them. If you look at this, this adds all your portions of the summation. It's add, it adds all of them and we get our expect our chi squared. So I just want to remove all this. Because I want to use this space. So once we have calculated our test statistic and we find that our test statistic is how much? 4,395. I'm going to say it's 4,4. 4. I'm just going to leave it to two decimals or I can just leave it to all the decimals that we have. 4,3956. So our his statistics is 4,3956. That is our test statistic. Now we can go to step number four and make conclusion. So I can draw my picture and represent my critical value or my region of rejection, which we did find that it was 5, 991 and our test statistics falls in the do not reject. Therefore, since our chi squared stat of 4,3956 is less than our critical value chi squared alpha of 5, 5,991. We do not reject the null hypothesis and we can conclude by saying that there is a significant, uh, how did we complete the previous one? There is not sufficient evidence to prove that the uh, race and gender are different from one another. Okay. So that is how you will conclude and do your test statistics. So let's look at the next exercise. Use the contingency table to test for independence for two variables given in this column at 5% level of significance. Therefore, our alpha is 0 0.05. And they have given you the, the contingency table, how many number of rows? We have one, two. So this is a two, 
grow by how many number of columns? One, two, and this is a two by two contingency table. Okay. So, same. You need to be able to know how to state your null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. And the question here is, which one of these statement is incorrect? So tell me. The first one says the null hypothesis is the variables are independent. Is that correct or incorrect? Correct. That is correct. Alternative, if the first one was correct, therefore it means the second one will also be correct. Number two, they say you need to find the critical value. So since we're doing a two by two, so we can find our critical value by using alpha and the degrees of freedom. And our degrees of freedom is calculated by using R1 r minus one times c minus one so our r how many number of rows there were two minus one how many number of columns there were two minus one two minus one is one two minus one is one so it's one multiplied by one so our critical value Our critical value will be 0, 0,05 and the degrees of freedom of 1. So you need to go to the table 0, 0,05 since it's that they gave us and 1. Three. Our critical value is 3,841. That means that is correct. Step number 4. The expected frequency for years, they is our yes, and B, they is our B. Therefore, the expected frequency for 20 um, is 25. Is that correct? Let's double check. So how do we find the expected frequency? The expected frequency for years and 25, we use the row total multiply by the column total divide by n so our row total is 65 multiply that by 70 divide by 140 45 No, that's incorrect. And that would be incorrect. So the last one, they say calculate the test statistic. And remember, the test statistic is a long number. We can do that using our template. So we need to find the correct template. And this is our correct template. It's a two by two. So we can use our two by two. We just change this to yes. And that to no. And this to A and this to B. And we can just copy that Up to here, copy that to there. And there we have the same table, but not the same values. We still need to populate it with the right values. Just remove the white area. And calculate. You will see that everything relating to that calculation disappears as well. So we need 40 and 25 and 35 and 45. And that gives us 145 as our grand total and they are our expected values and depending on how you calculated it you should have received 31.38 the previous one uh, the expected frequency for years which is 25 on this one we know that it was incorrect so now we are calculating 
the test statistic and the test statistic is 4.54, which is the same as what we have here, 4.54. And suppose that the calculated test statistic is 4.54, we know that that is correct. The null hypothesis is rejected. And it will be rejected because your critical value, if your critical value is 3.8, 41, it's on here, your test statistic will fall in the reject null hypothesis area. And therefore, that will be correct. So that is one way of answering the question by using the template. The templates are just there to help you with this long calculations that you have, especially now since you're writing online exams, there is nothing wrong with using this to help you. And also when you are doing your assignment, just see if you are able to use some of this template. Okay, so let's look at another example. So this is a study on the mode of transport that workers use to commute to work and associated with the distance covered by each mode of transport. So you do have the distance and the mode of transport. So Let's look at this. How many number of rows? We have one, two, three. Don't count the total. Three rows. How many number of columns? One, two, three. Three columns. So it is a three by three. So we can go to the three by three contingency table. And there it is. It is our first one. Um, I'm just going to... Make it smaller and minimize it. Then we will use this 10, 10 to 50. I don't have to write it the way I see it there. And then 50. As long as I have the the information. Then we have bus and car and train. And I can remove all these other values. 15, 21, 22, 18. 27, 17, 23, 19, 26. Okay, so I can be able to answer all the questions that they will be asking, except the theory ones, because here you have your test statistic, you have your expected values, and we can also change this. Change the template so that it automatically change the titles. Okay, so. There are your, your values, my expected value based on the column. So I should be able to answer the question. So let's read which one of these statements is incorrect. Number one, the null hypothesis is independent. Is that correct or incorrect? It's correct. 
that is correct. Then if this is correct, then it means number two is also correct. Number three, the region of rejection. Here yeah, they're asking you to find the critical value. The region of rejection to reject the null hypothesis is calculated as the test statistic uh, less than your critical value will be 9.488. That's very tricky and very confusing. Let's go to number four before we answer number three. Number four says the test statistic is 6.29. That's what we got, right? That is correct. So let's go back to the critical value. Critical value, we're going to find by using R minus one times C minus one. So your row columns, your row and columns, your row, we said it's a three by three. So this will be three minus one times three minus one, because here we're calculating the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom here will be two times two, which is equals to four. And we are told what the critical value is, is oh, sorry, our alpha is 0, 0.05. So critical value of 0, 0.05 and degrees of freedom of four, we go to the table, 0, 0.05 and four, is 9.488. 9.488. Now, instead of jumping to conclusion there, we need to place our critical value and our region of rejection. Our critical value is 9, 488. And we know that if the, the region of rejection or the rule says if your chi squared step is greater than your chi square critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. That's the rule. That is, that is the rule. Now, in terms of this question, it says we reject the null hypothesis if your test statistic is less than your critical value of that. Is that correct? Will that be correct? I've just given you the rule. That will be incorrect. It's supposed to be greater than for us to reject. It's supposed to be greater than. So that will be the incorrect one. And step number five, it says we can conclude that the mode of transport is independent of the um, is independent of the distance traveled by sampled. Uh, Our test statistic weight, sorry, let's, this is, this is very confusing. That is why I am very confused with the way they ask this question. So looking at our test statistic, we did find our test statistic to be 6.29, right? So it will fall in the do not reject. So if we're not rejecting, so therefore it means we're saying it is independent. So that will be the incorrect one because it should be greater than. And we are concluding that we are not rejecting the null hypothesis. Therefore, this will also be correct because we can conclude because we are not rejecting it. We can conclude that they are independent of one another. That's it. Yes. Two. I know that we are above time. Uh, I'm just going to recap just now and to recapping with uh, more additional activities. So this is another question. I think there are about 
I had about 10 questions, so you can go through these questions on your own as well. So uh, remember that expected frequencies, you calculate them by using the row totals multiplied by the column totals. And if you are given a table that is not complete, please make sure that you complete it first. Remember 950 is the same as 1000 minus 950 to get the missing value there. For John, and at acceptable to get it, you will say 950 minus 265. Um, and for uh, the total on this side, it will be 1000 minus uh, 700 will give you the 300 as an answer there. And to get the unacceptable for Peter, you will get uh, the 300 minus 265 will give you the answer there. For John, and unacceptable, it will be 700 minus the value you found there, or it can be the value you found on 950 minus, or 1000 minus 950, which is 50 minus the value you have found there. That will give you the unacceptable John. And then you should be able to answer this question. Observed frequencies are all these frequencies that they gave you originally. Um, Always know that how you state your null hypothesis always has the independent, your alternative has dependent. How to calculate the degrees of freedom? The number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one, that's how you calculate. The test statistic, please use the template and also select the correct one. So this is a two by two contingency, therefore you will use a two by two contingency table to find that. Otherwise, you just need to use your chi squared test that is equals to the sum of your observed minus your expected squared divided by your expected. So every corresponding expected value and the observed value. So you subtract one from each other and square the top part and divide by the expected value. And you will also require to make a decision and in order for you to not get confused based on the if the critical if the test statistics is larger than the critical value you reject you can draw yourself a normal distribution and make it skewed a little bit and say this is your chi squared alpha and the degrees of freedom which tells you your region of rejection and anything that falls here, you reject the null hypothesis. And then otherwise, you do not. And also you can answer some of these questions. You can see on this one, they are asking you uh, almost similar things. Always remember, symmetrical means normal. And we always know that a chi-square test, it is a skewed distribution test. So you should be able to answer these questions with ease. And here you are asked to calculate the test statistics. So this is a one, two, three, four, and one, two. So it's a two by four, um, a two by four. I don't think I do have a two by four. I have a three by three, three by two, a, oh, they, this, a two by four. And already it is in there in the template. You should be able to answer this question with ease because if you download the, the template, some of them are already pre-populated with some of these questions. This is a three by two. You should calculate your chi square test because they ask you to calculate the test statistic. So this is the test statistic and this is your, your critical value. Your critical value your test statistic. Um, you just need to do that to answer this question. The last question, or oh, not the last, the second last question, also they gave you a two by two table. Answer the question. Almost, they look almost exactly the same. You can't go wrong with this. And this is a two by four, one, two, three, four, a two, this is a two by four contingency table and you will find the template on there. You just answer the question. 
the last question it is a three one two three and here yeah, notice that they are total missing right so always remember to have your total or you don't even have to worry about the total because on the template itself it calculates the total for you and if you would have noticed this is already part of the template if i go there you will see that this is already part of the template because the three by two already had used the template to answer that so you can use the template to see how you answer this so the totals are already calculated on the template but if you are not using the templates always remember to calculate your template and answer the question right and that is all that i can offer and share with you for now if there are no questions Please remember to complete the register. I'm going to repost it on the chat. Excuse me. Yes, Justice. I can't access the chat. Can you send it to WhatsApp as we have done last, please? Yeah, just this, the same link I sent on the WhatsApp, you can still access it there. So okay. It will never change. Yeah, you can just use the same. Okay, okay so enjoy your... Uh, what time do we finish? It's quite it's a... like I'm, I'm finishing earlier than we're supposed to finish. Why am I saying what you... No, our class ends at 10.30, so we still have 10.30. So let's go and look at other questions. I'm, I'm thinking of during the week session that are one hour, 30 minutes. Oh, sorry, my bad. We still have more time. Let's go and look at the questions. So we're done with this one, right? So let's do the next one. Okay, so let's look at this last then this question. I bet. So move. Okay. So two employees, Peter and John, are monitored to determine whether is there any differences in the proportion? In the proportion of acceptance parts produced by the employees, the sample of parts produced is given below. So this is quality. Is it acceptable and acceptable? And the employees who are doing the tests or who are monitoring are Peter and John. Okay. Um, we can complete the whole table before we use our template. Let's do it here. So 950 minus 265. 950 minus 265. 285. It's six eighty-five. Six eighty-five. And one thousand minus nine fifty is fifty. Seven hundred minus six eighty-five. It will be fifty. Uh, yes, fifty. Seven hundred minus six eighty-five is fifty. And this will be 300. 265, uh, 300 minus 265 will be 35, I think. 
300 minus 265 is 35. Right, so we can go to our template. Let's use our template. We have a two by two. So we go and look for a two by two template. And I'm going to say unacceptable and acceptable and unacceptable. Yes. This is Peter, and because now I'm lazy to type the whole name, and John, and we can remove all these measures. And input the correct ones. So this one. 265. I'm not good again. And 685. Just as your mic is unmuted. Oh. Sorry, And 15. Okay, so 300, 700, 950, 50. So it means we did the right calculations on here. So let's answer the questions as asked. Okay, so now we can answer our questions. So the first one, which one of the following statement is correct? Number one, is it correct or incorrect? It says the null hypothesis are dependent. Is that correct or incorrect? It's incorrect. It is incorrect. So that is the incorrect. We're looking for the correct statement. The observed value or observed frequency for acceptable and John is 665. Is that correct? That's also incorrect. That is incorrect because acceptable and John is 685. So that is incorrect. Let's bring our table with the expected frequencies. So remember the expected frequencies. If you are not using the template, you are going to calculate it using the row total times the column total divided by your sample space or your N. The expected frequency for acceptable and Peter is 265. Incorrect. The expected frequency for acceptable and Peter is 285. So this says is 265. They took the observed frequency. So that is incorrect. The degrees of freedom is one. So now you need to make sure that you know your number of rows and your number of columns because this is a two by two contingency table. So your number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one will be two minus one, two minus one, which will be one times one, which is one. The degrees of freedom is is the one that is correct suppose the test statistics is equals to 40 is our test statistic 40 our test statistic is 40.1003 so that would have been also incorrect
next, let's look at the next question. The next question, a certain media company published four magazines for teenage market. The executive editor of the company would like to know the readership preference of the four magazines is independent of gender. A survey of 200 teenagers was carried out. The following contingency table are obtained. And here as well, there are no totals. So if you calculate in this manually, then remember to calculate your total, especially if the first question says, what is the expected value? It means you need to be able to go and calculate your expected value. So let's look at the question. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? To calculate, the expected value of young of, of youth and girls girls and youth is 12 so to calculate the expected value for that we need the row totals times the column totals divided by the grand total there so we can go to our contingency table yeah it's a two by three table two by three so it, we're looking for a two by three contingency table. And sorry, it's a two by one, two, three, four. It's a two by four, not two by three. Two by four contingency table. And this is our table. And if you look at our table, it looks exactly the same as the table we have here. So, Fortunately, now because we're in a presentation mode. So, girls, boys, beat youth growth life. And the numbers are exactly the same 18, 38, 12, 26, 20, 34, 28, 24. We have included the right values. Okay. I minimize it better than that. So we can leave it as such. Okay, so we calculated yeah at the bottom. We need to also fix bottom to reflect the same titles. As the ones at the top. So number one, calculate the expected value of youth and girls. So we know that uh, the row total of girls is 78. Multiply by the column total of 38. And it will be 78 times 38 divided by 200 gives us 14.82. Then that is correct. The second question, I'm just gonna leave it here. For you to go through all the questions and then I will, I'm gonna give you five minutes. I need to go get self water. Just go through the questions.
Okay, sorry. I wanted to check if the templates that I'm referring to are uploaded so that you can use them. I apologize for that. So, but if you go there, the here is the template that I'm using during this session. So you can download it and use it as well. So that then we are all looking at the same, the same thing. So which is this template. Okay. So let's minimize that and go to the presentation. So our question, let's go back there. Let's go back to our question. We're looking at a two by four, right? Two by four. Contingency table. So let's answer the question. So the first one, we established that it is correct because the expected value, the expected value is 14.82. Why is my thing so small? The expected value is 14.82. Question number two, the null hypothesis, gender, and magazine preference are independent. Is that correct? That's correct. That is correct. The alternative, independent, that would be correct. The degrees of freedom, your number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one, right? How many rows? We've got two rows. Minus one, how many columns? And four columns. Minus one, so it will be one. Multiply by three. Therefore, your degrees of freedom is correct as well. And number four, I gave you this answer a long time. <gasps> is number four is the chi square symmetrical? No, it is not symmetrical, but it is. Huge distribution. Because if you look at this, if you don't know, you can always come to your table and look at that. You can see that this is a skewed distribution. Let's go to calculate the test statistic. If we use our template, the test statistic, we found that it was equals to 6.8916. So that will be option number one. So, but you need to practice using the template so that you know how the templates work. The only thing on the template that you need to put is just the observed frequencies. The rest, the template will calculate. You need to also be aware that which template you need to be using based on the number of rows and the number of columns. 
what type of a contingency table you are using. So the next couple of questions, I'm not going to guide you through the activity. You will tell me which template we need to use, and then you will answer the questions. I will do everything for you on online, but you need to guide me. So let's go to our next question, which is exercise seven. The first thing you need to tell me is which template to use because you can see the uh, they don't have the totals and they're asking you to calculate the test statistic and we're going to go and do the critical value. But in order for us to calculate the test statistic, which is the end product of you completing the, the template, uh, which one, which, Contingency table are we using? We need a three by two. We need a three by two. So let's go find the three by two. This is a three by three. This is a two by three. This is a two by two. And the last one is a three by three. So we're just going to substitute the values there. ST, I'm just going to use the abbreviation NP, NP, NB, NG. We have 20, we have 30, 45. Probably I should have removed all of them. Forty five and fifteen, thirty and ten. So there is our table. And this table of ours is not working. It is working, it is calculating, sorry, I bet. It is calculating correctly. It is working. So let's answer the question. What is the value of your test statistic? So your value of your test statistic, you just gonna look at the last value there. It's zero. So either option four and option five are correct because zero and zero, the others are incorrect based on the, the, the calculations that we did. And we can double check that because if you're not sure that they are correct, so total year is 165. 165, the total year is 120. If we calculate for 90, it will be 120 multiplied by 165 divided by our grand total is 220 divided by 220. If we take our calculators and calculate this, it will be 120 times 165 equals divide by 220 and equals 90 so it will still give you the same so i'm not gonna go and do all of them now let's go find the critical value chi square critical value is given by i of alpha and the degrees of freedom and our degrees of freedom it's given by the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one how many rows and how many columns? We have three, three minus one. Three minus one. And two minus one. Two minus one. And the degrees of freedom would be? Two. Would be two. So here we need to find our alpha. They told us that it's at 
alpha of 5% level of significance, so it's 0, 0,05 and 2. So let's go. Zero comma zero five and two. Then the critical value is five comma nine nine one. Five comma nine nine one. Five comma nine nine one. So which one is the correct one? That means this one is incorrect. Only option four is the correct. Answer. Easy, right? So it will be easy to answer questions in the exam or in your assignment. I think I'd like using the, the template is much quicker. Yeah. Easy. Because otherwise, then you would have to calculate all the expected value and say 90 minus zero divided by zero, which will be zero and it might take you forever to finalize that. Next, which contingency table we need to be using? Do you all have, did you download the contingency table? Yes, two of two. It's a two by two. So you just go to the two by two contingency table. I, do you all have it? Because I also want to give you a chance to play around on the contingency table and then um, see if you are able to, to use it. I can. Hello, is this Liz? Yes, Justice. Uh, how do I download it? Because I'm just using a cell phone. Uh, you don't have a laptop. So unless I can request someone to borrow me his or hers. So you don't have a you don't have a laptop. No. So it means for you you have to always calculate things manually. Okay, I didn't take that into consideration, Justice. But however, for you we will, for this exercise we. Will, we will do it manually for you as well. Um, so maybe if I if I, I can buy a laptop, then how do I, I download it? Uh, you will go to where you find the notes online. Um, sorry, when you go to when you go to the schedules, where is the thing for the schedule? Yes. When you go to this schedule thing, uh, you do have uh, the link for notes and recordings because you join the session using this joint session and then notes and recordings. When you click on that, it will take you to a area like this. You just scroll to the bottom where it's numeracy and you look for basic statistical literacies and you click on that. When you click on it, it will, oh, sorry. When you click on it, it will go to basic statistical literacies like this. You just open the class notes folder. When you open it, it will open the this, and then it will go to the notes. Here are all the notes, and here is the template. You just download it from here. Okay, this list. You, you can download all of them or download only what you are looking for from here by just clicking on the three dots. There will be a download. You just click on it and download it. Do not work from, from here. Just download it and it will be there. I will. So let's go back to our presentation. And we go to this. So I want those who have this, use your 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 template if you are able to get it. Change the titles. So which the A and the or whatever it 
because of mine I've been playing on it now. It looks different to the one that you have. You have different weights there. I change them. So this will be A and B. And this will be D and H because I'm just taking the first high school, did not attend high school and did attend high school. I can a D H did not attend high school and high school. And then you just remove all this and the 40, 20, and 70, 30. And then answer the question um, based on what you see from there, because I'm going to go out of here and go help justice to get the, how to answer the questions. Okay. So, the first thing, the first thing you need to always know is how to do your, put uh, your state your null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. And then justice, I want you to uh, do the following on your side. Calculate for me the column, the expected value for 40. So I'm going to say for 40 is the same as 70 multi, oh, sorry, 60 multiply. I'm going to do one and then you need to do for all of them. 60 multiply by 110. Divide, divide by 160. And then you need to do for 20. Expected value will be 60 multiply by 50 divide by 160 and then do for 70 which will be 100 multiply by 110 divide by 160 and then do the last one which is 30 will be I'm just going to put the f so that we know that these are frequencies. Uh, that will be 100 multiplied by 50 divided by 160. Uh, you need to calculate all of them. Once you have calculated that, I want you to also do the critical value, chi-square alpha in degrees of freedom, where we calculate degrees of freedom by using the number of columns minus 1 times the number of Sorry, number of rows minus one and number of columns minus one. So if I have all these values, then I will we will get to the test statistic. There is no test statistic that you need to calculate, and then we will answer the question. So these are the three things that I want you to calculate, and then we will get back to it. I'm gonna give you three minutes. Okay. 
Are you done, Justice? Okay, so if we calculate our expected values, let me take my calculator to the other side. So the first one for 40, the expected value, and also those who are using the template you can confirm. We say it's 60 multiplied by 110 equals divide by 160. And that gives us 41.25. That gives us 41.25. If I go to the yes, if I go to the template as well, you can see that it calculated it as 41.25. The next one, if you calculate for the next one, which is 60 multiply by 50 equals divide by 160 it will give you 18.75. And if you go to the template, you will see that it will be 18.75, right? Then we do the this two last ones, which they are 100 multiply by 110 equals divide by 160. And you should get the expected value of 68.75 so if we go to the template we should also get the same 68.75 and the last one okay. is 100 multiply by 50 equals divide by 160 and that gives us 31.25 if we go to the template you will see that it is 21.25. Those were the things I asked you to calculate. The mm -hmm. next one is to find the degrees of freedom. So how many number of rows? There are two minus one. How many number of columns? There are one, two columns minus one, which means the degrees of freedom is one. Then you should be able to answer any of these questions last year. So let's see if we are able to answer the questions. So I'm going to bring back this contingency table here because most of the answers are here. Okay. So let's answer number one. Oh, no, we didn't find the critical value. So we need to, we still need to go find the critical value. Let's. Find the critical value. They gave you a level of significance of 1%. So it means we're going to find the chi-square critical value by using 0, 0,01 and the degrees of freedom of 1. So let's go find it. 
0, 0, 0,01, which is the second last column, and the degrees of freedom of 1, which is 6,635. You see that? 6,635. And then we come here. Uh, the critical value is 6,635. So let's answer the question. <clears throat> so, number one, we're looking for the correct answer. Is number one correct or incorrect? Number one is, I'm just double checking if you guys are here. Maybe I'm alone. Number one is incorrect because it states that the null hypothesis is dependent. We know that the null hypothesis should always state independent. Number two, the degrees of yes, the degrees of freedom is equals to one. Did we find it? Yes, we did calculate it. It's equals to one. Therefore, number two is the correct one. Number three, it says the critical value is thirteen point two seven seven. We did find the critical value to be. 6,635, so that is incorrect. Number four, the observed frequency of high school and party evaluation, high school and party evaluation B is 30. It says it's 31.5, therefore it is incorrect. Number five, the expected value, which we calculated manually and also on the template. We did calculate the expected values here. It says the expected value of did not complete high school and party evaluation, party evaluation A, so did not complete high school and party evaluation A is 41.25. They say it's 40, they take the expected, the observed value, which means this is also incorrect. And that's how you will answer the question. If they would have given you a test statistic justice, so you have your expected values there, which I didn't write, uh, I didn't write them down. So once you have your expected values, which are 41.25, 41.25 and 18.75, and 31.25. If they would have asked you to calculate the chi-square chi test, which we know that it is the expected value of your observed minus your expected squared divided by your expected. You would have said 40 minus 41.25 square the answer, divide that by 41.25. Plus, you do the next one, which is 20 minus. 18.75 squared divided by 18.75 plus 70 minus 68.75 squared divided by 68.75. Seven five plus, and then you do the last one, which is thirty minus thirty one point two five squared divided by thirty one point two five. And once you have the answer here, it would have given you the test statistic of zero comma nine one three nine zero comma one nine three nine. Or is it three five three nine? And that would have been your test statistic, which is the same as that value that we have here. 
that value there. And that's how you would answer the questions. Okay. So we already covered um, uh, some of this. You just need to make sure, especially those who are using the template, make sure that you choose the right template. This is a two by four. Uh, you're given your level of significance, which means it's your alpha value. And you need to know that your null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis now. Based on this information that is on here, it says which one is incorrect. On these two questions, question number one and option number two, they made an omission error here. They should have put at least H0 or H1 so that you, you are clear which one is which because they give you similar statements, number one, number two, and they just say gender and favorite spots are independent. Gender and favorite spots are dependent. Whether are they looking for the reason or are they asking for a hypothesis testing? And I think on this question, it was just an omission of putting whether it's this as hypothesis testing statement. Then you need to calculate your degrees of freedom. Remember, it's R minus one times your C minus one if you calculate it manually. So not even manually, but you need to be able to calculate that. And your critical value, it's alpha and the degrees of freedom. And you know, you've calculated your degrees of freedom and your alpha is 0 0.05. So always know that it's 0 0.05 because you divide the percentage by 100. And <clears throat> you're going to also calculate the test statistic and you will get that and you make your decision and state which one is incorrect or correct based on that, those statements. The last one, uh, you can also answer this. Option one, they are asking you to find the critical value. So mm -hmm. you just use your chi-square critical value of alpha in the degrees of freedom, yes. Can you go to the back slide, please? Mm -hmm. I thank you. I wanted to, what do you call? Screenshot. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So the last question, you just need to calculate your chi-square in the degrees of, chi-square degrees of freedom and your alpha to find your critical value. And number two is just stating the hypothesis testing, looking at whether is it the null hypothesis and relating to the statement that they have given you. Number three is to calculate the chi-square test, which is chi-square statistic, which is the sum of your observed minus your expected squared divided by your expected. Therefore, it means we need to go and calculate the expected value for each and every one of those values by using your row total times your column total for every observed value. Dividing that by n, which is your grand total. And once you have that, then you can also find your degrees of freedom. So your degrees of freedom is number of rows minus one and number of columns minus one. And you would have calculated your degrees of freedom with the second one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought there is a question. So number four, you would have calculated your degrees of freedom there. You are able to answer both of them at the same time. The last one, you make a decision. If your critical value, if your critical value is what it is and your test statistics falls in the rejection area, you reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, if it falls in the do not reject the null hypothesis, you will state that you are not rejecting the null hypothesis. And pay attention now. Really, really pay attention because here they gave you a 1% level of significance. Here they gave you a 5% level of significance. Hence, you will have to come here to go and do your critical value alpha and the degrees of freedom for this one. So here you will use your critical value as 0, 0,01 and the degrees of freedom that you would have found 
when you calculated the degrees of freedom there. You mm -hmm. must pay attention to that because it's not at 5%, but at 1% level of significance. Okay. And that concludes today's session. Are there any questions or comments or going back to the template so that we can iron out any issues? Remember the template, you just need to change the title. So anything anything in my pen is writing inside. Okay, I didn't want the pen to write. But you just need to change the titles and the column, the row titles, and also delete whatever it's in the white area. That is everything that you need to be changing. The others, including the expected value and the calculations done, and the test statistics, they calculate automatically. The only thing that you need to feed is just the data that is inside here. All these values, you just need to to add them, including also all these columns. Those are the things that you need to input, and this calculates automatically. However, you need to make sure that you're using the right. Um, you are using the right contingency table by looking at the title, whether it is a three by three, a two by two, or a three by two, or also at the bottom I have a a two by four. If there are more than that, I don't know. But those are most generic uh, type of contingency table that you can get. So I just used those ones uh, on the tape template. Other than that, if there are no questions or comments, please make sure that before you leave the session, you complete the register. And and that is it from me to you. Are there any questions or comments? Um, no questions from my side, except um, just to confirm that you said it is safe to use the tables during the exam. Yeah, you can okay. use the table because right. you're writing online, right? You're not yes. in the exam venue. OK, thank you so much. You can use the templates, yeah. Thank you very much, Cecilia. Thank you and enjoy your weekend. Bye.